control. All good, though. All right, you guys. Good morning, afternoon, evening from wherever you are, from where we are. We're in California here in Carmel, California. And you guys know who I am. I'm Mark Silver. Uh, I am really excited. I'm stoked, as we say in the surfer world, to be going over your photos. We've got a lot that we're going to cover today. Jared pulled up something like 40 of them, right, Jared? Yep, we got 39 already, but that's not to say that you can't uh, throw in your photos now if you're part of the AYP Club. Just as a reminder, join AYP Club and then post your photo with hashtag critique, and I will be trying to keep an eye on it. I got a lot of stuff going on in the show, Um, but if I know that you're in the chat and you say that you've submitted a photo, I'll try and check it out and we'll try and get it onto the show absolutely and let's say hello to some of you guys jared hey chicagoland always good to have you with us anderson from switzerland i love switzerland as you probably know um Batareg from birmingham i believe i've been there and i've certainly been to london i have it I love London, spent a lot of time there actually. Uh, We once rented a flat in Kensington and brought my kids over and we spent a lot of time going through London taking photos. It was really amazing. And then Gatine in Montreal, it's chilly I bet. Yes, you are way up there. I lived near Montreal a long time ago uh, in Vermont. Like, you know, we're a couple hours away definitely starting to get cold. And uh, Sergey from Poland. Okay, I love having you guys with us. So, and then Rob in Denver. Okay, Rob, thanks for joining us. So, uh, first things first, let's talk about our sponsor for this show. And we're going to be giving away one of their prints to one of you lucky guys or gals. Uh, Jared will... Uh, probably describe what that is, but let me just mention some of the photos or some of the specials that Bay Photo has. 20% off on acrylic prints. These are really cool. You guys, I'm sure you've heard me say this over and over again, but make prints. It's really, really important. They're still doing their plaque sale. 25% off. And then this is the one that excites me the most. is 25% off on fine art prints. Definitely take advantage. This is where we all live right here. So 25% off. Come on. You can't miss on that one. And you're also going to get uh, not an additional, but on your first order, you get 25% off. So support Bay Photo. Support your own art with prints. It's super important. Okay. Well, we're going to dive right in. We got a lot of ground to cover. So without further ado. Yep. Oh, I do uh, want to say we start, wait a minute, actually. one more thing. I'm sorry. I want to remind you guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe and enable the bell. We want you to join us on all our videos, and we want you as part of the AYP family. So don't forget about that. Okay, Jared, I cut you off. What were you going to say? Uh, one last thing is, remember, we are giving away a Bay Photo print. Yes. Uh, it's going to be a 16 by 24 maple wood print. You get a choice of natural or white finish. That's pretty and, cool. And uh, eight border options. Um, and make sure that you join the AYP club or you at least stay to the end of the video because we can't give you your prize if we can't contact you. We need to know uh, who so, you are. And if we don't know who you are, it's hard to give stuff away. So yep. So definitely please join AYP club to make sure that you'll get your print uh, uh, if you win it and stay to the end of the show so that you can find out if you won. Anyways, uh, okay. let's get started. So, uh, we so our on first the already. I love this image. I saw it on AYP club. Oop, your audio has uh, changed, Mark. My audio has changed. OK. Yep. Your audio has changed. Well, let's see what's going on here. I think it might. It be sounds just... like you might be coming through a new microphone. It's well, you're getting it through my AirPods, so that's hopefully okay. Everybody but else everybody else my, is. Yeah, I'll just double I'll, check. I'll keep it. 
I'll double check things while you're talking about this first photo. You're a lot quieter than me on the stream, I believe. So, okay. well, let's just check that out. Go ahead and uh, tell us about this first image. Who's it? Yeah, I'll give the introduction first. So, Jared from Chicagoland, we're going to look at his photo first. Uh, we've got, uh, so this is from a wedding shoot that he did, uh, recently, and he did a little, little bit of experimenting, uh, with it and he shot it in black and white with a black and white profile and zone focusing. And then he did a minor crop, uh, thanks to a lot of advice. You know, you've been talking a lot about cropping things to eliminate a small distraction. And then he did some light exposure adjustment, but otherwise it's pretty much out of camera. Um, and he said it may not be technically perfect, but it captured a decisive moment that's far more and that's far more important to me. Jared, this is a spot on photograph. I love it. I saw it on uh, AYP Club and it's it's perfect. I, I, who cares about perfection? It, it's not the name of the game, you know, Bambi Cantrell expression beats perfection any day of the week it's not about you know all the i don't know what else you need to improve in it anyway it's perfect it's the expression of the girl is great you know we have uh, various stuff we can see in the background and i love it you did a great job what can i say and by the way just yeah i love it the fact that it's black and white i mean it definitely adds to the whole impact you know what a photograph what we're trying to do with a photograph is grab people emotionally you know and i've got the emotion the excitement of the girl is the big emotion there you know there's also also kind of juxtaposed with the fact that behind her there's there's you know these are qu kind of quiet dancing going on and here she is just breaking out i love it Marcus uh you'll Mal want to turn your audio up a bit more uh, okay. It's a bit quiet still in the stream. It's it's better quality, but it's still too quiet. I don't know why that is, because I just... Let's try this. How is that? Is that okay, I'll, uh, guys? Keep a, I'll keep an saying, eye on the stream. All right, because I didn't... All I changed was my air listening into you, so I wasn't going through the speaker and not reverberating all over the place. I hope that works for you guys. Let me know. So I'm trying to get this screen set up too. Okay. Is that working now? Uh, You're guys? better. You could oh. probably turn it up just a little bit more. All right, Unfortunately, here. there's a 30 second delay, so we don't hear what you guys hear until about 30 seconds later. <laughs> Sounds like a dodgy cable. I don't think the cable's done anything, but you guys. Yeah, I think that's fixed. Because you definitely, there was something weird with the microphone before. Anyways, okay. Uh, while you're turning that up, uh, while you work on turning that up, I'll take a look at our next photo. So, the next so. photo, you see the problem? All right. I think so. Uh, so, for go. our next photo, let's pull up. Uh, so, this is from Familia. And uh, so beautiful and wild was the caption that they did with it. Um, it's with a older lens. I know that um, they've been working, they've been doing uh, kind of a back and forth with Cindy uh, on in AYP Club discussing like trying to take photos with older lenses. Uh, and so this was part of that experiment. All right, before we go any further, I just want to make sure the audio is working. Somebody said... Uh quiet but can hear and i don't know why that is because i've got this thing cranked up and i don't know what is going on here so can you guys give me a confirmation how is it sound now because from my end all the night all the knobs and dials are turning. Uh, why don't you try it's still a bit quiet why don't you try turning the gain up on the microphone itself okay let's try that that's a good idea let's pull it up here it's nice to have you guys with us and not, okay, here, here comes the gain. How's that? That's all practically all the way up, which is We're usually pretty good. This is like the one of only like two or three times that we've had any problems. Yeah. How does that sound? 
Can you guys give me a shout out if that's better? There was a brief jump in the volume, so cable could be in play. I don't. It could be. I don't know. Let's try. I don't know what cable would be out, but let's try it. Okay. Still low. Well, it sounds know? better. Uh, okay. Are you guys okay? Sounds better. All right. I'll get so really close we, to the mic too. We hear from people better. Crazy people are saying better, clearer, better. Okay, good. Okay. Yay. Awesome. Okay. Start over. Who is this? Who's whose photo awesome. is this? This is from uh, Familia. Uh, and so once again, uh, as I was saying earlier, they and Cindy have been doing a back and forth. Um, and uh, it's it. The idea is to take pictures with older lenses. Oh, and interesting. So this is one that they're doing. Um, they said it's a with a Weddleblick 135 millimeter, a 135 millimeter uh, f 2.8. Well, I'm fascinated. How did you get this close to this? That's a good animal. question. You're in the chat, so let us know how yeah. you uh, got this image. I'd I mean, that's that is you know with a 135, you're pretty close. You're not like shooting with a 600 millimeter lens. Where is this? Is this a zoo or? Uh, I, I mean, they live I'm, in Romania, if I remember correctly, from last week. I think that's what they said. That's where they said they lived. Okay, I'm pretty. So I don't know where this image is. You know. Okay, so um, this is a really good image. The use of uh, uh, you, you know, you obviously went into Photoshop, left the eye. Uh, you you used a mask. I've done this technique. Uh, it's it can be very effective. I don't like to overdo it, and I don't know if you do or not, but if it becomes sort of a, if, if you do it with a lot of photographs, it, be, it sort of loses its luster, but I, it works well in this case because there's that eye just jumping out at us, and of course the black and white is, uh, you know, highlighting the, the, the spots and whatnot. Compositionally, it's, it's clean. Is there something? What am I looking at here? Um, oh, I see. Those are, wow, ah, okay. Those are part of its um, hairs coming out, like, of the eyebrow, it looks like. I thought oh, it was talking um, about these right here. Yeah, it almost looked like scratch on film yep. at first, but I see that's part of its uh, antenna, like these. What do we call these? Somebody it's knows. It's the whiskers. The it's, whiskers, it's, it's thank like you. like the whiskers. Um, okay. I have cats, and even like house cats can tend to have those are big uh, whiskers those there. too. But but good job, and it it works. It all comes together. All right, and we've got okay thirty eight more to we've go. So one. keep keep her moving. Uh, this is from Elise. And she had a caption uh, on this one. It was elegance was the caption. Very and it was taken at a zoo. That's where that the Jaguar photo was taken at. Okay, well, that makes me feel better. I didn't think you were <laughs> going to get that close. Okay, but yes, thank you. Okay, elegance, interesting. So we're shooting through a window, looks like. And um, we've got the woman and we've got, you know, the... The, I like the black and white. I think that uh, that works well in black and white. I don't know what it was like in color, but I, it would keep the, like, for instance, the bee from pulling our eye off. And I think it's very clever that you're shooting through this window. My Here's my only comment on this. I think it might be more effective. And I'm just going to throw this out. This is my first thought here. I think it might be more effective to keep the woman sharp because what we're seeing that's sharp is whatever's in front of her. And I can't tell. I guess that's just the window frame itself. So that's sharp, but the woman's not. I mean, she's the feature of this photograph. So I would probably just flip that around, keep her sharp, and let the window um, go out of focus. That's just my off, you know, the first thought I have. But, but great on, I love the experimental, you know, aspect to this and by the way that's really important you guys just experiment don't be afraid to try new things looking through something like this is is a cool way to do that all right all right our next one is uh Gitan. i think that's how you say your name uh but we looked at this one earlier this was the one that we were getting the show set up with 
Yeah, I love this. We were, I was commenting on it. And of course, the, you know, you did a beautiful job processing black and white. Um, you've got that sky. I don't know if you, what you used. Um, it's actually not a window. Okay, it's a reflection. Uh, you could put in the chat what that is. Um, as we're going through these things and you guys want to make further comments, please do so, so we, we know what's going on. Um, this is a this is a really cool photograph. It's it's you know this is in my composition book. I talk about a balanced composition. It's something that the old masters used a lot, where you have two objects in this case perfectly balanced, and the trees are kind of in the middle. That that really works well. We've got clouds in the sky. I love seeing clouds, and of course the dark sky. And again, I don't know how you process it if you used. Uh, Silver Effects Pro, I mean, I, I, it, it appears to me you did, I'm not sure, but you could, uh, you know, you might have put a red filter on that, which brought out the, you know, the deepness in the sky. But bravo, well done on this one. All right, uh, let's go ahead and grab, so this one is from uh, Lorraine. And this was taken with a iPhone. Wow. Uh, and uh, yeah, taken with phone camera. I guess I don't know if it was an iPhone or not, but taken with a phone camera. Uh, the caption was my husband taking off his shoes. <laughs> I love it. This is cool. You know, and again, you, you, what I, what I love about what I'm seeing here, you guys are experimenting and you're, you're not just, you know, shooting. Uh, straight on or whatever you're taking the viewpoint of looking down which you are and you've got these light rays which are doing interesting things because like we have these these rays going off over here by his head and then we have of course you know the burnout stuff but it doesn't really matter there's <laughs> not a, there's not a lot of detail that we're missing there and the composition of it i think is great how you filled the frame excellent all right, uh, we've got another one here. Uh, let's go with, this is from Jessica Tam. And Hi, Jessica. I think there was a, it was, uh, I, th I don't know that this one had a caption. So. All right. Wow, you guys are just hitting it one after another. I love it. I love the geometry. Geometry always works. You know, my favorite, one of my favorite photographers of all time is Henry Cartier-Bresson. And he said, geometry is like a pleasure for me. And he was all about geometry. So we have, you know, we have the geometric lines of these uh, overpass. No, it looks like train, right? This looks like a train. Where is this taken? Uh, th this is uh, Chicago, I believe. I was going to say, it looks like the L, So right? I think uh, these are... Yeah, I think those are like L track. Yeah, those are the L. Overpass. Okay, cool. And the you know, the tree, that's what makes this work. It's the tree, the shadow. Like without that, it, this wouldn't have really worked at all. But the tree shadow beautiful. So we've got, you know, we got the we've got the geography, the geography, the ge geometry and then the shadow. That all works really well together. My my only here my only little thing, and I, you know, it's not a lot you can do about this. The bottom right, you always want to look at the corners. This is super important because that pulls my eye down there because it's white and it's a sidewalk or the edge of the road or something. But remember, Bob Holmes, scan your image, scan the frame. What I would have done here is just, and you can crop this. You could even cheat. And you could get rid of that in Photoshop or Lightroom. I probably would do that myself. If, if this is, you know, I can't, you can't really crop it too much because you're going to lose the shadow. But you could, you could easily clone that road and just get rid of that bottom right. Because what you don't want is you don't want your eye to be pulled away from where you want it to look. And where, where you're highlighting, what you're highlighting in this image is the shadow and the geometric figures. So I would just change that. That would be a super quick fix. Clone it, you know, just get rid of that bottom right. And I might crop it a little tiny bit too. Other than that- Chicago Land Jared thinks that that's the uh, on-ramp near I-80 or I-90. Well, you would know 
Mr. Chicago. Yeah. So uh, anyway, that's awesome. And uh, boom. Good job. All right. Uh, the next one that we'll do uh, will be... All right, here's uh, Christian Schmidt again. He's the one that had recently done the... Uh, he did the last photo that we looked at in the last show. You guys are so. just nailing it here. This is amazing. And Jared, you just picked them out, right? I mean, you, you're pulling them yep. all out. Beautiful black and white. Good, great processing. Um, leading line. Uh it, it it has a little story feel to it. It's like, come walk down this path. Um, you know, you've got dual leading lines. You've got the path itself as a leading line. And then you've got the fence posts. And the clouds are beautiful. The sky, you processed it really well. And I'm curious, again, what you guys are using for your processing, because this is, this is working really well. Good job. All right. Here's one from Carlos. Oh, but by the way, before we move on, so just just the point on this one, too, is that you have the edges. So one thing, you know, in a dark room, go, let's go back to keep keep it on this one here, yeah, Jared. But, OK. Yeah. So in a dark room, we would always do what we call burning the edges, you know, in the dark room, which means give them whoop, go back, uh, give them a little more. Uh, uh, light. So okay. oh, so you do want the black and white. Yeah, then. leave that okay. there. We, we uh, might the, be a little bit off sync right now ourselves. Okay. So these edges are burned in. In other words, they're dark. And that's something you, I just do as a general rule because it keeps, again, it keeps your eye from being pulled off. I just wanted to make that point. But you did that. So good job. Okay. All right. All right. Back to Carlos. And it looks like we're in the... Grand Teton National Park, where I was. Uh, wow, look at that. A guy on a stand-up. I didn't know that you could even do that there. So I was there a couple of weeks ago, three, four weeks ago. And it's one of my favorite places in the world. This is, right? This is the Tetons, correct? Sure uh, looks I'm like it. I'm not 100% sure. It didn't say in the caption, but uh, you were just there. so I, I would just... be surprised if it wasn't, because it sure looks like it. Um, we have... You know, it's interesting, an S-curve here. I have photographed from this exact spot. There's an S-curve going on here, which uh, curves around here and goes up to the base of the Grand Teton. And then we have this guy on the stand-up. I, again, I didn't know you were allowed to stand up there. But, um, you know, this works really well. You've got a, you've got a really strong compositional technique here. Uh, you know, the only, here's my only thing. I may have just waited for this guy to get closer into the center of this frame simply because our eye is already going on this S-curve. So your eye, is, your eye is being pulled by whatever the, you know, the strongest compositional point is. So he's, I, I got that, but he's like, off center from that which is okay but it might have been i don't know if you just you might have gotten some other versions of this where the guy was over here to the left i that's the only thing i would i'd like to see that if you had them there you go all right uh here's one from john he just submitted it a couple minutes ago so i'm guessing that it's the john in the chat Brand from new. Earlier. Okay, we haven't yet seen these in the AYP club. Uh, and so uh, the caption for this was transitioning city, fascinating to walk the streets and witness the changes, some sudden, some abrupt, others slow. The ruins of a factory here, uh, clearing the industrial fabric of bygone eras and readiness for future gentrification. So it's documenting our local area. It, uh, documenting our local area is a fascinating study. So good. You're you're following what we were talking about. You know that one photographer who went out and found the ruins in his local town, and you're doing the same thing. Interesting how they just left these two beams up. I guess they're going to get demolished later on. Uh, this is, you know, it works. Um, my only thing I probably would process it to bring the clouds up a little bit more. And, you know, there's several ways to do that in Lightroom. 
Uh, again, Silver FX Pro would really help you with that. Just to get, because you've got the clouds, but I'd like to see them a little stronger, a little more prominent. And there's, you know, the information is there. It's just really a processing point. But, you know, great. You're going out and, and finding... Part of what we do as photographers is we find the beauty and stuff that everybody else is walking by all the time. Because, you know, it's kind of like one man's trash is another man's treasure. You know, you've heard that. So this is a building being demolished, which could easily just be ignored. You know, we're just waiting for it to get pulled down. But you you found the beauty in it, the geometry in it. There's like the that curved on the right, whatever that curved beam is. And, you know, I assume they're probably the same height, but maybe not. But you've got, you know, you've got an interesting geometric relationship there. So good work. All right. Our next one is actually from a friend of mine who joined recently, ah. uh, Josh Benda. And hey, Josh. Uh, I was with him when he was uh, submitting this photo. And this was for like uh, a senior photo. And he'd known uh, this girl since she was like 10 years old. So he said it was great to, you know, be able to take their their senior photo. Good job. You know, um, you've got her in the center of the frame. That works. We've got uh, lens flare. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence. I'm not quite sure if that works or not. You know, the lens flare at the top right. So we've been talking about, you know, keeping your edges and looking at your corners. It does pull my eye, but, you know, I think in this case it works because it shows the light source and it adds some interest. So, you, you, you know, there are no rules. <laughs> there are no rules. There are guidelines. So I don't want you to think, oh, you know, every time don't watch, you know, every time you take a photograph, there must be nothing in the corners because that's a hard and fast rule, which may or may not be true. In this case, it actually works because I think it helps tell us that she's, you know, she's sitting there and the sun is just right over there and we've got some interesting lens flare going on and it helps the whole story. So, so good job. It works. And, and again, right smack on the center. We're not using the quote rule of thirds. So I hope you guys have all realized by now there is no rule. There's no law of thirds. Like you're going to get a speeding ticket. No, you're going to get a ticket from the photography police because you violated the sacred rule of thirds. Okay, straight in the center. It works. Good job. All right. We've got one from Robin Mitchell. Uh, that was put up. I don't. I can't find a caption that I might have had recorded for it. Um, so I don't think there was one for this one. Robin, oh, I did find it. First time hiking in the Apafro Ap Pass uh, Trail up by Lake Dorothy in the Rocky Mountains. So this is in oh, the Rocky nice. Mountains in, Rocky in Colorado. Mountains. I'm assuming this is, uh, a, you know, is it sunset or is it sunrise? I'm assuming it's sunset. Um, but you tell us golden hour always works. You're getting that beautiful light and you're getting, you know, the cloud lit up, which is great. And the, and the peak lit up as well. So, and you've got, a you know, you got a diagonal line going there with the, with the edge of the, uh, the illumination diagonal lines always add a vitality to it. And you've got the diagonal line of the peak. So you're using these compositional elements really well, and you're you're following what I wrote about in advancing your photography of like clouds are beautiful, and if you put a cloud in a photograph, you're going to add dimension. You know, a blue sky doesn't always do it, but this one in this case does. So excellent! You guys are just banging right. them away. I love it. Yeah, it's so you guys make it so hard for me to have I to know. pick what photos to use because you have so many good ones uh speaking of good ones here's another one so this is from ram and it's called solitude very cool i love the fact that we're seeing this i mean this is my first thought from the boy's viewpoint you know we're looking behind him to see what he's looking at he's very intent on um 
you know, just looking at this beautiful scene and the clouds, uh, he's framed between the branches, so that really works well. I don't, yeah, I mean, this works. There's it. There's one little tiny technical thing. It looks, I mean, I think, yeah, just this is really tiny, but I'm going to point it out. So you do have a little uh, dust spot, it looks like, on your sensor. You see to the right. I'm, I don't, does my pointer work, Jared? Probably it not. It doesn't, but I okay. think I know what you're Yeah, right there. Uh, about. You've got one right here. Well, there's the, actually, yeah, one there, and there's one. Go, go right over here. Right here? Uh, farther right. See, there's oh, a little, here. yeah. And those are just quick fixes in Lightroom. I would just get rid of those just from a technical standpoint. You might have a couple of others. And uh, it's clean your sensor. <laughs> really important. Uh, Bob Holmes actually shows us how he does it. And uh, we're going to talk about it in, uh, we do talk about it in his course, but you got to have a clean sensor. Otherwise you spend a lot of time, you know, cleaning this stuff up. In the old days, we used to get dust on our negatives and you'd have to spend a lot of time in the dark room clearing that up this is an easy fix that that would be my only technical comment but uh otherwise the story really works well all right so let's do something quick we're going to do a quick return to a previous photo uh so last week anderson had his photo and i'll bring that up just to remind you uh, so this was the one Anderson had had, uh, oh, yes. and and you had mentioned that if maybe we had a different kind of a gesture from yeah. uh, the fisherman, and so he went looking through his other frames to find one with a diff different gesture, and he found this one, where now the fisherman is is there, and so yeah. he wanted to know if there was any kind of feedback that you could give. Uh, do you like this one better? What do you think? Uh, you're getting there. I would say something a more dynamic, like the, you know, he if he's casting, uh, would probably add a little more interest to it. But you're you're on the right track. So just keep doing that. <laughs> just keep looking, and or go back and shoot. Just try different things, you know. And that's why you get to a, a shot like this. Um, you're you're just gonna, you know take a lot of images until you find the one that really works best. That would be my comment. I'm going to throw this in here in the middle of all this. Remember to subscribe. <laughs> we, we're on a subscriber drive, if you guys uh, haven't seen that, but remember to subscribe and enable the bell. Okay. Anyway, just keep working on it. You know, you're, on, you're, you're going in the right direction. All right. Uh, now we've got one. Here's from uh, Bob Kappa. Hey, Bob. There you go. Okay. California Poppy, right? Are you in California? Okay. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. Maybe that's an Iceland Poppy. Could be, actually. Yeah. Now that I look at it, it's probably an Iceland Poppy. Um, so it's, it's a beautiful still life. It... Uh, you know, you know, it captures kind of the life and death of this flower it's on its way out. And it's got texture in it, which is really interesting because the texture contrasts, you know, the, the beauty and the flowing of the, um, the flower itself. You've got the man-made. That's always a workable thing, by the way, is contrast. It's tulip. Okay, really. So contrasting stuff really works well. So we've got strong contrast between a man-made, you know, texture with several different textures and the the flower. Technically, I would only the only thing I would do is I would make this pop a little bit more. I don't know how you processed it, but um you know, I would I would probably if you're uh if you're in Lightroom, I would I would probably play with the clarity slider which will bring up the mid-tone contrast. Um, we don't like to slide the contrast slider too much because that can really start throwing everything else out. But I, I would just, I just work on it and make it pop a little bit more just to get a little more contrast in there. But hey, it tells the story of this tulip on its way out, again, contrasted against this texture in the, in the walkway. Good job.
All right. Our next one is from Sir uh, Sir Goyo, and I have a feeling that you're gonna like this one. Uh, so uh, wow. no caption, but uh, here you go. So you know, beautiful. It's uh, sunset. I assume. I'm gonna assume it's sunset. Um, it, you know, it's very warm, obviously super warm colors. Um, and you, you know, you've got the, you've got the greens contrasted. Uh, I can't, can't remember my color wheel that well, but I believe you're getting, you know, it's interesting. I believe the orange and the green are complementary, and there's a lot of orange even in the green. Um, orange and purple are complementary, which there, you do have orange and purple. He's got orange and purple, so those purple. are definitely complementary. So I, the only thing I would like to see is that sun a little sharper. Um, and I don't know what you what you captured this with. If it was an iPhone, you had no choice. That's all you get. Um, but the way to, to get that sun uh, sharper is really to stop down. If you go to F22, you'll get a, star, you'll get a starburst, you know. You don't necessarily have to do that, but I would just sharp, you know, I just get a little more sharpness out of the sun itself because it's a strong point. Your eye is definitely pulled there. That would be my only comment on this one. But great job. Again, you've got compositional elements working together, the diagonal lines. The V of the mountain is, is creating its own frame, and that, that really helps this image. Okay. All right, our next one is Matzeus. I think that's how you say that name. And this one did come with a story. So a man sitting next to two bullet holes at a cafe in Mumbai, wow. India. Uh, the place was the target of a terrorist attack in 2008 where 10 guests lost their lives. In order to commemorate the victims and show a spirit of defiance, the owner decided to preserve uh, some of the signs of the attack. Amazing. And, it, it, you know, first thought is it definitely has a story. There's a story going on here. Uh, not knowing, now I see the bullet holes. Of course, it's like your eye is drawn to that. So that makes sense. I'm, I feel like I'm, so it, it, it all works well. I like the guy. Uh, what is, okay, so there's a guy that looks like he's hol oh, holding an iPhone. He's looking into it, I see. And then the guy uh, next to him, kind of looking into the camera. You've got a lot of different layers here, and you've got almost like, I, you know, you have a frame within a frame. So you have the frame of the doorway. You have the frame of the windows. You've got several frames, which is really cool. It might be interesting, and the guy behind everybody looks like, I don't know what's going on there, but maybe he's, well, he's looking up, and I don't know if he's got a bottle in his hand, something something in his hand. The only thing I think is a little bit of a timing thing. And I think you've got the guy looking in the camera that works. The guy looking at his iPhone, it, it you know, I think it could be stronger if somehow you, you just kept firing away until he looked up or something where we actually can connect to that guy because he's really pretty much the center of interest in this image. And it's just a question of, you know, how many other frames did you have? Did you have one where he's looking at the camera or maybe looking somewhere other than his phone? Because we kind of lose him into the phone. So, but, but good work. And by the way, this is just another point. Again, Bob Holmes has mentioned, I probably have said this, you know, so much of photography is patience. And you don't know when you're going to get that exact expression that you're looking for, the uh, punctuation point, whatever it is. It, I, I just feel like it. It's just wait a little bit longer. Keep photographing until you go. Oh, there it is. Bam. That's it. And that's you know that's my only comment on this. All right. Uh, we've been talking quite a bit about film. And we have somebody in our group who has been practicing their film development skills. Cool. Uh, so this is Jeremy, who, if I remember correctly, is uh, early 20s, been doing Whoa. photography for a couple years, and they really wanted to try to do film. So they've been going to this Everglade 
uh, several times, and recently they went back again, and they just found this abandoned shed, and so they got a picture of it. My hat is off to you in terms of this is a color film. I have never processed one roll of color film. I was a black and white guy. I didn't even try color because color is incredibly finicky. You have to have your temperatures just right. It's uh, it's not easy. I always sent my color out to a lab. I usually just shot um, ectochrome or kodachrome. But <clears throat> well done on <laughs> digging in on that. I mean, very impressive. So what you guys are looking at here, I assume this is a four by five and you've got the edge of the, uh, you know, the image there, which is cool. That's always a cool thing. It looks to be like an older film. Maybe you've had it for a while because we've got some discoloration going on in the edges there. That adds to it. That's a cool, that's a cool look. Um, hey, just well done. I, I'm just, I'm, you know, stoked to see somebody shooting color developing it that's not an easy thing and i'd like to hear more about it was this older film um you know possibly there's i mean that's just my first thought there yeah it'd be fun uh you know feel free to do a bit of a longer post if you want yeah. in ayp club especially and this goes for anybody if you're experimenting with something and you kind of want to share your process or get any feedback on it feel free to do a longer post. Also, I'm going to put a plug in here for the mentorship. Expired film is quite popular. I don't know if that is. Yeah, anyway, um, I, have a, <laughs> I have a refrigerator full of expired film. Uh, anyway, um, I am going to be embarking on this mentorship program. You guys have heard me talk about it. One of the features of it, yeah, six by four. Yeah, six by four by four by five. Yeah, that's probably correct. Uh, anyway, one of the features of this mentoring program is creating a series of images. In other words, a story, so that I might say, okay, next week you come in and you've got more of these color images from that same area, and you start to develop not just a single image, but you start to develop a body of work based on a certain theme or idea or whatever, which is really important to do that. It's a good thing from a discipline standpoint, but it also tells your story over time. And that's incredibly powerful. So whether you go back to the same location or you're working with the same subject, like we've seen a lot of you guys with you know, a certain subject, perhaps you keep photographing them week after week after week, and we get to see different sides, like the girl that was in the blue dress. Maybe we see her, she's the feature of your, of your photo story. And maybe we see her, you know, the next week in a pair of jeans or shorts or riding a bike or whatever it is. But we keep seeing her in in these different vantage points and, and in different surroundings. And maybe we see her in a business suit or wearing a mask or whatever. And it just starts to develop that story. So I, I'm really looking forward to bringing you guys on board with me on that. You'll hear more about that soon. I've really got to get that written up. I'm going to make a video about it, actually. Okay, well, we're 43 minutes into this broadcast. So we'll just do a couple more. and We're going to have to call it quits. But I love what you guys are doing. All right, uh, we're going to go to the second half of the Chicagoland wedding photographer team. Bethany uh, has oh, put up Bethany. a photo, and this one's got the caption, First Dance. Nice work, Bethany. That's great. I mean, that's just my first thought. Just warm. Look at that beautiful smile. I love your vantage point. How did you shoot that? Were you on a ladder? or? I, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but... Everything about that really works well. You know, you've got, again, you've got just the warmth. It's the expression is what's coming across that just comes right through that photograph. And the beam of love that she has for him is, you know, obvious. And then you've got, you know, the diagonal line of the tablecloth. Um, diagonal lines in the floor. That That's her name. Sorry. Sorry. Get that in. <laughs> Thank you. It's so Beth. hard to figure out how to pronounce names when you can't hear it. So Bethann, pardon me for mispronounce, 
mispronouncing your name and good to good to have you on here with us. Anyway, diagonal lines, all sorts of great things working for you in this. And uh, well done. Bravo. All right. I promised Sumit that we would do another one of theirs. So here's on um, here's a photo from them. And, and I do not know exactly hmm? who is this from? Sumit. Sumit. Great work. <laughs> uh, you have chosen, you know, an interesting pylons or something in the ocean. The sky, the colors are all very interesting. Um, you've got these two guys out there. Uh, you've, 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 you know, done a long exposure. Um I don't know. My only thought is, would it be more interesting to reverse this whole thing and have them in focus and these pylons out of focus? I don't know. It's just, I, I would probably ask you if you had another version of that. I'd just like to see, you know, it might be more interesting. Because at first, you know, obviously the center of attention is this pylon right in the center. And that's, you know, got the color around it in the sky. But then we go look and we see these, two figures behind who are out of focus. And it, I, I don't know, it might be more interesting just to reverse that. Your horizon line is a little crooked. I don't, you know, I'm not saying you always have to have absolutely straight, you know, lines all the time, but it might, it might work to straighten that out. Um, but again, you're using a wide angle lens, so you've got a curve there anyway. But this is, you know, it's a good and it's an interesting photograph. It's got a lot of color and it. it's got a lot of different elements all working together. All right. Our next one's from Shenhal. Uh, and this one has the caption, a Muslim man at food market. You know, that works. It's got the framing of uh, the dark, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing the people you know, that we're looking through almost like a tunnel. In, in my composition books, uh, book, uh, this is, this is a, a framing element. It's either circular, it's pretty circular, or a tunnel, tunnel-like thing, which actually adds, all it does, whatever it does, it just basically pulls your eye to him, which is great. He's obviously the center of attention. It works really well as a black and white, and you did a great job. It, it all fits together. I think we got time for one more, Jared. And then we'll right, do our giveaway. Got one more. Let's go. Let's go with uh, another Victor one. I really liked this one. Uh, so this one's from Victor, who had done the woodcutter one. Oh, uh, and yeah. this one is baking bread at the kitchen of the Golden Temple in India. Wow, what a story. I love it. You know, my first thought was, boom, there's a, there's a whole story here. And uh, it's got, uh, you know. Taken, uh, the last one. Mumbai uh, during Ramadan. Shinhala, yeah, was, that was in, during Ramadan. So, so, so um, a lot of good things going on here. You know, the gentleman is, the, is obviously the center, but you've got frames within frames. You've got the, the woman on the left could almost be her own image. Right. We could we could say, boom, she's there. The people in the background are doing interesting things, too. Um, the light. I love seeing the light source and you stopped it down. So you've got that uh, starburst there. And, you know, it's funny if we took the fan away and the light, this could have been a 100 years ago. The door, the window frames might give it away, but. Um, so this is a kind of a timeless thing. Chris Burkhart talks about that, you know, try to create images that could live on in, in any time. And, you know, we do have modern elements coming in the fan and the, and the light and the possibly the window frames, but, but dominant amongst that, um, are these people who could have lived 500 years ago, right? You know, any, almost any decade, and that's really powerful. So you did a great job. I love this image. I love the browns and contrasted with the color that we see in there. That's Victor that's says wonderful. it was super hot in there when uh, he took the that, photo. He needed that fan. You know how you can tell 
a photograph. This is, this is something I learned a long time ago. You know a photograph that really grabs you? It's when you wish you had photographed it yourself. And uh, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it's really a good job. So you guys have just nailed it. You've, you've hit so many home runs. I'm really proud of you. I'm so glad to have this time with you to spend with you as far as, the, you know, this is the AYP club. This is why we put it together. And it, it really does my heart a lot of good to see how great you guys are and how, how, how well you're coming along as photographers, you know, not coming along, but you're already, you're already got it. So I want to thank you so much for being a part of this community. We are really building something here with AYP and I'm so glad to have you guys with us and, and, and giving us your, your tremendous work. So Jared, we got we to gotta give away something here, right? We do have to give away something here. So I've got the list here of everybody. Okay, drum roll. Number. We're, picking, we're only picking people who show up in the, in the live stream, by the way, because that's how we, you know, we decided that. So who is it going to be? All right. And I'm very thankful that I now know how to say the name. It's Beth Ann. Uh, Tremper is Boom. our winner. Beth so I know that you're part of the AYP club, so I will get in touch with you on Facebook and we'll get you hooked up with your Bay Photo print. Excellent. So well done. That was a beautiful photograph. All you guys, again, you've done, you're doing such remarkable work. I am building some. I want to build something that is like the art school that I wish I had gone to. I went to art school and it wasn't perfect. I got to tell you, there's a kind of a myth of, oh, I wish I'd gone to art school. Well, guess what? May or may not have been a perfect environment. I'm trying to build an ideal art school with you guys, photography school that has these elements. This is what it has to have. Good critiquing. I hope I'm giving that to you. That isn't just all over the place. It's talking about one thing usually. And it's stuff that you can go off and do something about that's really important on a regular basis it should have a consistency to its approach and the only way you're going to have consistency is to have texts and in our case uh not just a book but we have books we have multiple books but we also have video courses so that you're not just i'm not just pulling stuff out of you know where i'm I've already researched it. I've already done the hard work. I know this stuff works. I know it's true. You know, it's in my books. It's in my courses. You have to have a solid foundation to work from, okay? And there should be an ongoing project that you're working on. I mentioned that. And last but not least, there has to be a whole community surrounding it. You don't go to school by yourself. Unfortunately, in today's world, we're kind of experiencing that, which isn't ideal, but you're surrounded by other people and we're part of a community. So we're building this. This is what AYP is really, I've always had this idea and we're finally putting all the pieces together to get there. So um, I love having you guys on board and uh, this is going to sound like an ad. It is a little bit, but please take advantage of the uh, free book offer. Um, we, it really ends up, I'll tell you, with the shipping and handling, it ends up being about a 50% discount, you know, because you're paying the shipping. If you bought uh, these books on Amazon, they're going to be, you know, anywhere between $17 and $19 in, your, in the U.S. Unfortunately, we can only ship to the U.S. right now, but you're paying about half of that. We're trying to work out our overseas shipping. It's gotten a little complicated. But please take advantage of that and look at the offer that I have bundled in there because that's put together to lead you guys onto this mentorship program. Not lead you on, but lead you into. I'm not leading you on. I'm leading you into the mentorship program that has those elements that I just talked to you about because the last component, so you have the video courses, and you have my books. You have unreleased footage from 
15 different photographers and only Jared and I have seen. I'm not kidding. You've got uh, the final element is we're going to start with a one to one call where we, you know, we do it via Skype or Zoom and we look at your images and I help you really drill down to what your goals are and where you want to go. So, okay. It's a little bit of an ad, but I want you guys to be part of that. I want you to be part of that community. So please seriously take a look at uh, participating in that. Okay, Jared, I think we've covered everything. Is there anything we were missing? Oh, some news about what's coming. Uh, Senhal wanted to know if there's a Kindle version of your book, which there is. Is there I isn't believe, right? It, yeah, there's an ebook version of it, which um, we can uh, hook you up with. It's a PDF. Uh, I I might be able to get you the Kindle. I'm not sure, but for sure the PDF yeah. version of it. And that's what we're going to be offering we'll, uh, overseas, we'll folks. We'll look into that, and we'll we'll reach out to you. We'll see what we can figure out. Yeah. Okay, so tomorrow, the famous Dan Milner, we're going to talk about seven, probably more than that or less than that, I don't know, but seven or so reasons why you got to keep your gear simple, right? I mean, really good reasons. And that's tomorrow at 10 a.m. Please join us with Dan Milner. And Saturday, special guest, our friends, Bob Holmes and Andrea Johnson, who have been off in Washington shooting for weeks and weeks and weeks, and we finally got them back on. So we're going to talk about some of the key points of what does it mean to be a National Geographic photographer? How do you shoot like a National Geographic photographer? That's on Saturday. So please join us for those two very important shows. And uh, what else? Jared, I think that's uh, about it. Also, if you weren't there to join us, for uh, yesterday's broadcast where we did the news, uh, and maybe you don't have an hour of your time, uh, right about now in like four minutes, okay. uh, our short version of our news show is going to be in your feed. So check that out if you just haven't gotten enough advancing your photography today yet. You uh, probably just, haven't. You just got to wait four more minutes and then <laughs> okay. another video ready for you. All right. So... Uh, who has this question? Uh, Lisa bought the book, but I didn't sign up for the mentor program. Is there another way to do that? Oh, yes. We have a link specifically for that. Jared, do you have that link? I uh, don't I'll, have it yet. We're still working on it, but uh, I will no, mark you down. Specifically no, we have a specific link for that whole package that I was talking about. But anyway, that's within the in, in the book offer. But we'll get we'll get that to you as well. Okay, so uh listen you guys i love having you part of this community keep doing what you're doing you're doing a fantastic job and remember to subscribe and enable the bell like and share our videos leave your comments because jared and i really do try to answer every single comment say this with me I'm serious. Say it with me. I, someday we'll have a YouTube thing where we can actually hear you guys too. That would be really cool. Last but not least in our whole program, remember to get out and capture your own images of life. See you guys tomorrow. Stay well. Stay safe. Stay creative. And see you soon.